All right, another recent uh, propaganda piece that Steven Anderson brought out, July the 13th of 2014, um, as he did this thing about 501c3, and he openly deceives his viewers and his congregation here by claiming that they are not a 501c3, his little cult down there that he's running. Let's listen to this. You today that that's a lie. Now let me say this first of all, our church, Faith Word Baptist Church, is not 501c3 certified. Okay, he just said it is not 501c3 certified, which is funny because if 501c3 is fine and good and there's no problem with it, then why are you making excuses? Why are you saying, well, we're not that? Well, why not? If it's just harmless, see? But uh, then you jump forward here to about 42 minutes or so, right in about here, and uh, he says it again. Here we go. Okay, well, well, this is what it's telling us not to do. Okay, so what? Again, let me just reiterate, our church is not even 501c3 certified. But even yes, if sir. we were, we would be in total compliance with this, okay? Okay, you know, even if we were 501c3, we'd be in total compliance with the federal government. That's what he's telling people. He just got done reading off the IRS uh, codes here and stuff, and he said, we're in compliance with it. Oh, you're in compliance with the federal government. Isn't that wonderful? Let me show you here on this website. Uh, here you have the Arizona Corporation Commission State of Arizona Public Access System. Okay, file number. There's the file number, Corporation Name, Faithful Word Baptist Church. Hmm. Domestic address, 2620 West Greenway Road, Tempe, Arizona, 85282. Send them some tracks, send them some information if you feel like it. Write them a letter. You know, statutory agent information, agent name, Stephen L. Anderson. Hmm. Didn't think that, uh, you know, as Christians we should be called agents of the federal government. Hmm. Agent mailing physical address there you go agent status agent last updated interesting that a church would be called agent a pastor called agent of the state government corporation type nonprofit see and later on in the in the message there he says about that they are nonprofit we're not 501c3 we're just nonprofit and see he deceives people with that over here, business type, religious, corporate life, period, perpetual. Oh, yeah, that's nice. County Maricopa, original published date, blah, blah, blah. Down through here, officer information, director information. But he's running everything there. Um, nice little cult he's got going. Scan documents, annual reports. So you gotta re you got to file your reports and everything, you know, to the federal government. Let them know that you're towing the line. Delinquent annual report. Oh, he's got four delinquent annual reports there. Steve, he's not being a good agent. Naughty, naughty agent. But see, nonprofit. People go, well, see, he's nonprofit, but not 501c3. Let me show you the deception of that. Here you have nonprofit charitable organizations, IRS classifications for nonprofits. There you have 501c1, 501c2, 501c3, okay, 501c4. 501c5, it goes the whole way down through here to 501c15, next page. 501c16 goes down through all these different designations, 521a. See, so the whole point is, he says, well, we're a nonprofit, see, nonprofit down here, and so we're not 501c3. Uh, yeah, but you're classified as a nonprofit. So it really doesn't matter which one of these designations you have. You could be any of these things here. You are still an entity of the state. You are still a government building, a government organization. You are an agent of the federal government. Right there. Agent. Incredible. And uh, I guess I don't need that one. You know. It's just, it's incredible. And, and he goes on to say, too, in this thing here, that, um, you know, uh, we're not into political activism and stuff like this. Well, that's kind of funny because here on this activism website, Act Right, one of the ones that's in their directory is Faithful Word Baptist Church. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. 
but you know he he's saying in this thing here that uh you know we should we should be under the government rules and things and, and we should be in total compliance he just said that they're in compliance let me just show you something from scripture here something if you want to look up some interesting scriptures just go to your Bible search or look it up in your concordance and put in by what authority okay by what authority enter Matthew 21, 23, And when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching, and said, By what authority doest thou these things, and who gave thee this authority? Matthew 21, 24, And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will ask you one thing, which if ye tell me, I and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. He answers them there in one, Matthew 21, 27, Mark 11, 28, 11, 29, 11, 33. It's all the same thing. The political religious system there that was under the Roman government they had to be signed up with the government it was the same thing that we have today and they're coming to Jesus and they're saying whoa, whoa wait a second here are you an agent of the federal government and Jesus is saying no I work for the Lord and let me show you something else here it's also very very telling you say well that was just Jesus Jesus could do it we can't oh yeah let's go to Acts chapter 4 Acts chapter 4, uh, let's see here, verse, uh, we'll go to verse 5. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name? Have ye done this? Hmm. Isn't that interesting? And Peter is on to preach to him. Very interesting. And look what they think about him, who, too, down here in verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Hmm. Huh. Okay. And they go down, of course, and they beat them and things, and, you know, and uh, put them back out on the street. But it happens again, if you go over to Matthew, or I'm sorry, Acts chapter uh, 5, let's go to the next chapter, Acts chapter 5, verse 28. They're in trouble again, it says, uh, well, here we'll go up to 26. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. Oh, boy. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to go to the IRS and get official non-profit status so that we can be agents of the government. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. We ought to obey God rather than men. You see, no governmental organization has a right to tell the body of Christ what to do. In fact, our Constitution stipulates that, the very First Amendment. Congress shall make no law regarding the establishment or uh, yeah, the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So, little smiley jerk here, he's actually violating the, the Constitution. Hmm, interesting. And you say, but uh, he's a political activist. He's, you know, he's a, he's a great guy and everything. Yeah, and his little claim to fame here, you know, there's his picture when he got his butt kicked by the Border Patrol guys and stuff, you know, and he's, you know, He's not going to let him search his vehicle or show his papers, but it's okay to be yoked up to the government through 501c3. So you can, you can submit your church to the federal government and be an agent of the federal government, but you refuse to show your papers and let him search your car. Uh, yeah, that's consistency. And something else that's kind of weird about Stephen Anderson. Why is it that you have this group here this Hootery, the Hootery militia, and these nuts over here were all this into this uh, survivalism type of stuff and whatever. Interesting that uh, they were located in Hammond, 
Indiana. Interesting there, because Stephen Anderson used to live in Hammond, Indiana. I'm sure there's no connections at all, I'm sure. And of course, Jack Hiles's cult was in Hammond, Indiana. But I'm sure there's nothing to it. No, no, never. But these guys here were making threats against police officers, law enforcement, and the government came in and raided them and put them in jail and all kinds of stuff. And yet you have Stephen Anderson right here calling for Obama's death, and he's still a free man. Please explain that. Let's listen to this a little bit. In his evening service about a month ago, Anderson used biblical scriptures to justify his prayer for the president's death. Why should Barack Obama die like the untimely birth of a woman? Why should his children be fatherless and his wife a widow, as we read in this passage? Well, I'll tell you why. Because since Barack Obama thinks it's okay to use a salty solution, right, to abort the unborn, because that's how abortions are done, my friend, and the embryo melts like a snail. And I'd like to see Barack Obama melt like a snail. Well, so these wing nuts right here threaten law enforcement and they go to jail. Steven Anderson threatens the president by name. It's all over national news media. I mean, look at it. Look at it. Associated Press. Associated Press Channel. And yet, uh, uh, Stephen Anderson is still a free man. I wonder why. Well, maybe it's because he's a agent of the federal government. Oh, no, nothing like that. That's conspiracy, Brian. Yes, it certainly is.